Greetings. My name is Bruce, and this is the second in a series of videos explaining downhole tubing disposal. The previous video explained the benefits of using slick line and coil tubing in downhole tubing disposal to save money during well abandonments. This video is an overview of the method of downhole tubing disposal. Let's start by explaining why and how you need to abandon an oil and gas well. You plug an oil and gas well to prevent fluids from escaping from the well into our environment or another geologic formation like groundwater layers. The various abandonment well integrity issues that you must prevent are leaks through the rock, leaks through the casing cement, leaks along the well bore or casing, and leaks through the casing. During well abandonment, you must ensure that all of these various integrity issues do not exist when you're placing cement plugs miles or kilometers below the Earth's surface. In order to transport fluids, wells are designed to have as much liquid space within the casing and tubing as possible. These are common sizes of tubing and casing that you'll find at the reservoir level, where the majority of hydrocarbons within a well are located. Larger diameter rings shown here represent the casing and the smaller rings within the larger rings represent the tubing which is generally centric to the inside diameter of the casing and as shown here the inside diameter within the casing is generally composed of 80 to 90 percent liquid space when you include both the space between the tubing and the casing and the space within the tubing. This natural feature of subterranean wells is very important because you can either pull the tubing out of the casing to place an abandonment plug, or you can compact the tubing steel within the liquid space of the casing to move it out of the way so that you can log and place abandonment plugs. To address the issues of well integrity, you must either pull the tubing or compact it so that you can log the primary cementation to ensure that you do not have well integrity issues. Now let's discuss the method of downhole tubing disposal. The dotted area at the bottom represents the reservoir, while the blue area represents the primary cement plug which isolates the reservoir. The dotted area of the reservoir can be isolated by, for example, cutting off the tailpipe and squeezing cement into the lower end of the well which is shown in blue. The next step in this example would be to compact the tubing by splitting it vertically and pushing a whole piece of tubing into a split piece of tubing using an inflatable packer. This allows you to place the second red cement barrier after you've logged the primary cementation. After placing the second cement plug isolation barrier, which is shown in red, you can repeat the process of compacting tubing using the compacting piston using fluid pumped through the existing wellhead. A normal inflatable packer can be used as a compaction piston with fluid pumped through the wellhead tubing with the annulus valve closed to build pressure within the casing and push the compaction piston. Let's look a little bit closer at this example well schematic. Our method allows you to place a cement barrier and also dispose of radioactive contaminated scale attached to the tubing. Disposing of tubing down hole removes the risk of bringing it to surface where it can contaminate our environment. With 80 to 90 percent liquid space within the casing, it's relatively easy to split tubing and drive another piece of hole tubing within the tubing to compact it so as to provide space for abandonment plugs. Compacting tubing provides a window that allows through tubing cement bond logging of the casing prior to placing a cement barrier on top of support formed by the compaction piston. It's therefore possible to use slick line and wire line, or in the worst cases, coil tubing, to avoid rig costs and meet all regulatory requirements within a pressurized environment in a safer and more environmentally friendly manner. Downhole tubing disposal 
It's simply a method of using proven equipment in a different way to deliver exceptional cost savings in a safer and more environmentally friendly manner. Oil and gas wells have kilometers or miles of tubing that could be compacted. Therefore, multiple compactions and multiple abandonment plugs can be set within a well to fully abandon the well using the existing tubing and existing wellhead. So you see the method of downhole tubing disposal, which uses off-the-shelf tooling, can save significant money by reducing the amount of resources needed for well abandonment. This graphic shows the steps of downhole tubing disposal. The first step is to split the tubing vertically. The second step is to sever the tubing horizontally above the split tubing. The third step is to expand a piston above the severed tubing. And then the fourth step is to apply pressure to the expanded tubing so as to push the severed tubing into the split tubing, which comprises the fifth step of spearing the severed tubing into the split tubing to provide a space for the sixth step, which is bond logging of the casing cement. Once the pressure integrity of the casing cement has been established, the last and seventh step is to repair any damaged casing cement and place an abandonment cement plug to isolate the lower formations from surface formations and our environment. So let's look how the first step is accomplished, which is vertically splitting the tubing. This is a picture of the tubing inside the cemented casing and formations. With our vertical cutter shown in a deployment position on the left side and a cutting position on the right side. The vertical cutter uses proven steel cutting wheels, which are rolled up and down and deployed via a spring that extends the cutters against the tubing so that when the cutters are extended against the tubing and rolled upwards and downwards they vertically split the tubing. This part of the process is explained in more detail in our next video. The second step of severing the tubing can be accomplished with any off-the-shelf severance means and the third step can use almost any through tubing inflatable packer. Once the packer is inflated it can be used to push the severed piece of tubing through the split piece of tubing, as shown here. An expanded inflatable packer will seal against the casing, and the area or volume above the packer can be pressurized to cause a large force, which pushes or accomplishes step four of spearing the whole tubing within the split tubing. Spearing the tubing into the split tubing compacts it and provides a space or a window within the casing for cement bond logging tools. It's important to understand that conventional cement bond logging tools cannot log the cement casing with the tubing in the way. Cement bond logs bounce a signal from a transmitter to a receiver and therefore must be centrally located within the well bore. And any intervening tubing, which is normally eccentric, causes such signals to be erratic. And therefore, it's not possible to perform conventional cement bond logging unless you first move the tubing out of the way by either pulling it from the well or compacting it. That means that if you want to meet the regulatory requirements, and guidelines of, say, Oil and Gas UK, you must move the tubing using a rig or hydraulic workover unit or our method of downhole tubing disposal with slick line or coil tubing. The next step in downhole tubing disposal is placing cement. For instances where the logging shows damaged cement, we have a later video explaining how it can be fixed. For now, let's just assume that the cement behind the casing is good and we can set the abandonment cement plug. Downhole tubing disposal uses the existing in-place tubing 
to place the cement plugs, you pump through the center part of the tubing and take returns through the annulus and the wellhead valves. Cement is much heavier and thicker than the fluids within the well and will channel until it reaches the support of the inflatable packer where it will begin to fill up the well and form the abandonment plug. The lighter fluids will float on top of the heavier cement and be returned through the annulus and the wellhead valves. This method of cement placement is much better than that used by a rig, which instead of using in-place tubing, will remove the tubing and then run a drill string back in the well to perform the cementing. But because a rig's time is so expensive, they generally do not set up a support packer and use viscous fluid below the cement which may or may not hold it. And it's often the case that multiple cement plugs have to be set because they can't tag the cement since it's fallen through the viscous fluid they use for support. So let's summarize the process of downhole tubing disposal. First, you split the tubing. Then you drive another piece of tubing between the split tubing. Use an inflatable packer so that you can create a space that will support a cement plug after you've verified that the cement outside the casing is still good. And all of this occurs kilometers and miles below the earth's surface, where it's much faster to go in and out of the well using slick line or coil tubing instead of the jointed piping of a hydraulic workover or drilling rig. Downhole tubing disposal is therefore faster safer, more environmentally friendly, and lower cost than hydraulic workovers and drilling rigs. Thank you for listening, and please watch some of our other videos explaining downhole tubing disposal if you want to know more. Thanks again.